welcome everybody to the Private Property Farming Podcast. Thank you so much for supporting and joining the podcast. I hope you have subscribed to our YouTube channel where you get all the agri content you need. We speak to farmers, entrepreneurs, business people, corporates and agribusinesses alike in the sector. So if you want to know anything about agriculture and farming, this is the place to be. Please like and subscribe and ask questions comment and obviously send through your suggestions of what you'd like to see right here on the podcast. Today we're joined by Ele Tungala, founder of Ignite Hub, and he's going to tell us about the creative spaces that he's been able to um, start uh, within his community, also bring up gardens uh, and, 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 you know, empower conversations around food security, farming, and I suppose also attracting youth in the sector. So yeah, let's hear about what he does, uh, the impact that he um, has brought into his communities, and let's just welcome him. Eletu, how are you doing? And thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. Uh, thank you, Mbali, for having me today. Uh, it's been a long time coming for us to have this conversation. And the farming podcast is a very relevant uh, space to learn about the agribusiness and just how we can grow in it and who, is, who are the key players within it. So I am the founder of uh, Ignite Hub, and this is a space uh, which was inspired by the lack of infrastructure when it comes to communities, uh, when it comes to townships. So there's very few uh, spaces that allows for people to have conversations around uh, the development of the spaces. But at the same time, we're faced with food insecurity within these communities. And there's very little conversation and actually actions to ensure that we impact, uh, we, we have a different conversation when it comes to the food security within these spaces. So Ignite Hub he started as a garden uh, where I was inspired also by the, by the emergence of COVID-19. Uh, during COVID-19, I was invited to uh, a, a garden tour in Kukuletu, and Kukuletu is a township. So for me, I was very shocked. Uh, a garden tour in Kukuletu, what do you mean? So here I am, part of this conversation, and I'm like, people have so many backyards in their backyard gardens within their spaces. And for me, this was a shock. And that was when uh, I was ignited myself to, into the gardening space. And Ignite Hub started where I started the garden because I had a background with to, when it comes to uh, creating uh, spaces within community events for performances, uh, inviting youth in, into conversations. And because there was lack of infrastructure and I had started this garden at ECT, this was an opportunity for me now to, to make a garden, a multi-purpose space where I can bring in more youth into, into the garden. Because as I noticed, uh, working with uh, other organizations within the community. The, the, the space, uh, the, the, the agriculture, uh, especially urban agriculture is taken up by old people and mm. quite understandably. So to, to using the garden, we are able now to bring education to the, to, we are able to bring education to youth within the community. Also, even the ECT students to take part within uh, uh, within uh, agriculture and understand what it takes to have food on the plate. Mm -hmm. With the gardens that you were obviously exposed to, what type of crops did you see people farming? Mm. <laughs> so we, so I saw a lot of spinach. Spinach is a so everybody loves spinach because <laughs> it grows it grows fast and. Yeah. For the first time, I saw brinjals in, in in the community, and for me. I asked the story, like, how, how do they get to have brinjals within their gardens? And they said, at, at some point, a lot of people were inspired to grow brinjals because they had to di diversify what they were growing. And they, they, grew, they grew this uh, brinjal, but people didn't even know how to cook the brinjal. How, how do you prepare the brinjal? So, like, there's, there's story like, stories like that. Mm -hmm. But you also find your onions, you also find your, your, your kale, you find your kales, you find your beetroot, a lot of beetroot, people grow a lot of beetroot because of its resilience. Mm. And there's quite, there's quite a few. And especially with school gardens, school gardens usually have a very big variety, especially the one which I was introduced to, which is called uh, Sinako Garden. So they had a lot of trees within them. So the idea for them was to create a food forest and they had a lot of fruit trees within their space, a lot of herbs, uh, you have your thymes, you have your amaranth, you have your rosemary, which I fell in love or with myself, where do you mean? So there's, there's quite a diversity. But when it comes to backyard gardens now, if you have your spinach, 
uh, your uh, your spinach, your onions, your beetroot, and anything mm. that grows fast. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And especially you know, all year round crops. Yeah. Fantastic. I, it's nice to see such a diverse range of crops. And I agree. Spinach is like mm. one of the most quickest crops to grow spinach and kale in that family group. Urban mm. farming has shown to be quite uh, a, a phenomenon right, around, um, around people these days. And uh, in your yeah, view, sure. what is an urban farm? And how are small, uh, sm uh, small gardens or, or, or small businesses profiting from it? Okay. So... For me, uh, I'd consider an, an urban farmer, a person who uses, who makes use of the space that they have. Yeah. I know the, the, the question of land is a very big problem, but sometimes we have spaces. And the urban, farm, the, the urban farmer, we consider a person who is in, uh, in an urban setup, who is able to use the space, uh, be it using uh, grow boxes, be it using pot plants. Uh, so, that I'm going to talk about this, which is also a, a business aspect, which I've mentioned into using my carpenter skills to create boxes for people to grow. So for me, where I've seen how people can profit from uh, use from from using their small spaces. So the power that I've been able to 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 see is the use of uh, collaboration with gardens within the community. I worked with an organization called Google to Urban Food Forest Initiative. So they've started about 20 gardens within the community three community kitchen gardens. So how, 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 how these organizations were able to, to pro, how these gardens were able to profit, they were able to pull together the, so we get spinach from one garden, we get carrots from this one, we get uh, uh, the beetroot from this one, and then we're able to pull those together and use markets in places like Sea Point where we're able to sell our produce uh, as a collective. So that, that was working for a while, but now teaching people to, to to, to do gardens within the urban setup, there was a problem when it came to follow up, ensuring that people are able to grow again when it comes to the next season. They're able to find their own seeds. So the power, of, the power of profit, uh, the power <laughs> I've seen that allows people to profit is when they are able to bring together their resources mm -hmm. and be able to use existing markets, and just uh, using seedlings as well. Because now there's a there's an opportunity more people are uh, even with my garden people have like my, my garden takes quite a central place within my community in Kukuletu, where a lot of people have seen how we have transformed a place which was previously a dumping site but now it is a beautiful space with uh fruit and with fruits and veg within it mm -hmm. so now people that, that has created created a demand people want compost people want to know how they can be able to to to, to learn to grow their own food so uh, there's that opportunity of selling the produce. There's that opportunity of uh, bringing the, the, the compost to the community so that people can be able to access it and uh, create within their own spaces. For me personally, I've seen, uh, uh, as I've mentioned, uh, I am uh, a carpenter and I started making a grow, grow boxes uh, where you can be able now to use those within your small uh, balcony, within your small yard to grow your own food. Uh, in that controlled environment. Mm, mm. Elit, what has inspired you to come up with all these innovative solutions of how to grow food? Like you said, in your back garden, taking a dumping site as well, mm. growing food. Now you're speaking about boxes. What inspired you to find various ways of growing food uh, in the manner in which you are? Okay, so here I am growing food far away from my own home. Uh, yeah. in an, at an ECD. I have to walk to get there, to water the space, and it, it takes quite a lot. And as I'm uh, interacting with other networks within the space, I see that there are boxes that are being sold and uh, other people are growing in boxes. And I'm like, I can create, I can create this because I have the skill to, to work with wood. So for me, I was inspired by the, the actual uh, spaces where they've, they've used uh, different ways to grow food with very little spaces. So for me, that was inspiring how people use the little space they had, but using boxes. And I was like, I can actually create these and bring them to the community. And besides, my, my garden was not big enough for me to make the profit, the kind of profit that I, I would love to make from that space. And I saw that opportunity for, from that side. So uh, I'll, bring to, I'll bring you to this. I don't know if you've heard of the growth, growth the, the food tower. So it's an American product. It's, it's, a, 
it's a vertical growing system yep. and people can grow can grow a lot of vegetables within that uh that small tower and for me i was like this cost about four thousand rands so this is not going to be accessible for the people within the community so i I, I converted, so I, I learned from that one as a creative, I was like, okay, let me make my own, but now using wood because wood is accessible. So using recycled wood, I was able to create a growth tower, which can take up to 120 seedlings within half a square meter. Mm -hmm. And that uses less soil, that uses less water and less maintenance for those who don't know how to take care of pests and your, uh, your, your weeds. So. That's one now aspect which I'm working on to ensure I can uh, put it out on the market and uh, allow for restaurants to grow, to have a cocktail bar, to, to have a cocktail tower, uh, a person who likes uh, their salads to have their own salads, but within a small space with very little maintenance and at an affordable price as well. And mm. the material is also sustainable because one thing, because uh, my, my, my journey into farming was inspired by uh, a grassroots movement to help the community to to be able to participate within the food system because we, we never know where our food comes from. So sustainability has been a very big part of my journey. And I had to find sustainable, sustainable material and which would also allow me to make it affordable to be access, accessible to people. But I did learn this one thing. Uh, as uh, entrepreneurs, especially from the townships, we are usually inspired by uh, we are usually inspired to make, create solutions which help within our communities, but can also be accessible in communities where there's more buying power. Mm. So now I've, I'm diversifying my, my growth tower to meet even the demands for, for those who are able to afford. These are your restaurants who, as I've mentioned, who need maybe a cocktail a growth tower. So specifically things that they use within their, their, their kitchen. So that's, that's the journey I'm on now, transitioning, uh, not, not, not too far from growing on the ground, but actually yeah. using the growth tower as well as, a, as, as another option. Happiness, if you're just joining us right now, we are speaking to Ele Tungala, the founder of Ignite Hub, and we're speaking around the secrets of growing food with limited water and land. And he's definitely proof of that because he's found so many initiatives uh, and ways in which you can grow food with just limited food, sorry, with limited land and water. And he's empowering the community uh, in the same in the same breath. Um, Eleto, I just want to find, you know, you, you've been speaking about urban agriculture, you know, farming in the urban areas, farming in townships, farming with mm. w in spaces where land is not in abundance, you know. So with, with, mm. with you having founded Ignite Hub and, ha and having engaged with communities and, you know, shown the diversity uh, in which people can grow their own food, etc. What have you found to be some of the issues um, around urban agriculture, especially around in the township and the communities that you serve? Just over and above limited mm. water and land, what other issues are, are, are prevalent uh, in these areas and uh, what type of solutions can we, we start thinking of? Okay, um, I'll, I'll say one of the biggest challenges is getting a buy-in from the community. Okay. and access access to a market mm. um so even myself uh, at some point i created as many towers as i could and there was no one to buy those towers because i was not out there at that moment so there's a lot of other people who grow a lot of wonderful veggies and they use natural methods so high value crops which will be bought by anyone who who, who has the buying power but now how do you access the market and it's quite understandable because the, the, the challenge of accessing the market is influenced by, the, it's currently at the moment we have a, a lot of uh, elderly who are within the space and the use of social media to actually start getting out what they're producing has been a challenge as well. Mm -hmm. So access to market has been one of their biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. And we've, at some point, we've, we've, we've tried planting trees uh, on, a, on, a, on a sidewalk like fruit trees on a sidewalk. So two days later, we came back, none of those trees were in that space. So theft has been one of the biggest problems. Mm. And you find sometimes you create yourself a shade net in your garden. Next thing, that shade net has been stolen. It is, oh. so it's, it's on someone's bagler somewhere. So people use the shade net sometimes to cover their bagler for their doors. And 
uh, you get those who steal it. So crime has been one of that or, or one of those challenges, mm. um, and also the access to market. But I also want to re to repeat this: when it comes to water, especially in the context of Kukuletu, you find that the the houses are. Uh, how, how they are made. So we, we've been on, on many courses where we're trying to learn about water catchment systems. And the challenge now is the water, the, 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 the roofs in Kukuletu are currently made out of asbestos. And to be capturing that water and using it on your plants is a problem because asbestos is, is, is there's a transition when it comes to government to remove asbestos in people's houses because of its toxicity. So that challenge water is one of the biggest challenges. And even when we're trying to catch that water, we find that the roof, uh, how it's made is a, is a challenge. So uh, as, as, as a collective, we've been devising ways to ensure that we can uh, be able to get water. So through our collective power, we've been able to have conversations with organizations like PPUU, where some of our market guardians as a collective uh, were, were helped to be able to have boreholes within their spaces. So using the power of network, we're able to uh, overcome some of our challenges. Yeah, this is amazing. And uh, I think, you know, what you're doing firstly is amazing, but it's also just discouraging that, you know, it's the very same community mm. that is taking certain assets that we're trying to build, like our shade nets, mm. et cetera. But um, moving on to more positive stuff, you know, I mean, you're a young person in the agri space, urban agri yeah. space, and you said you've been engaging with young people as well. So what type of guidance can you provide to young people who want to venture in the space, who are possibly listening to this podcast and are thinking, mm. I should be in touch with Eleta because maybe I've got space in my home garden or I would like to work with you and maybe make a bigger impact. So what type of mm. advice would you give to young people who are just starting out in the industry? Yo, one thing I'll tell you now, <laughs> start, ju just start. Yeah. Because I, I, I find a lot of people who, who even use uh, the, the seeds that they get from the produce they get from shops. Mm. So I'll say for, for you, start. If you can make your own compost with your kitchen waste, start doing that because there's an opportunity in that compost being sold if you can collect enough of it. And start using seeds as well. Seeds, seeds are, are, are a powerful things. So it's powerful to watch seeds are, are growing from, like growing your own plant from seeds to, yeah. to, to your own plate. That, 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 is, that is wonderful. And if this motivates you as an individual who would like to start within the agribusiness, it, it, it brings a different vibe into your home space to even have plants within your space. Even if you start with your succulents within your, within your, your, your own home, that, that brings a different vibe, a different perception about your own home when you're coming back to your own home and having things which are growing within your space. So there's that element of beautifying the space. At the same time, there's that element of there's the, 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 the agribusiness is so wide. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I, I, I was, as I was watching the, the podcast, like, thank you for the farming podcast, because now I've been, ever since I, 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 I started knowing about it, I was like, the, more people have to, 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 to know about, like, this type of work. Yeah. So start, like, go to the local gardening, garden at school, uh, volunteer for, for a day. Like for me, I, I'm the type of farmer who takes off my shoes when I get in the garden and just enjoy the space because I've, I've learned about what is called grounding. So mm -hmm. start and grow with the process because I believe now, I, I'm, I'm still in the, in the process of transitioning myself because I, I started as an activist within the food system because I, I, I had challenges with uh, the, the lack of, uh, of, of security when it comes to food, whereas South Africa is a producer of surplus uh, and food we have a lot of food in south africa but it's a matter of access and mm. uh, that's, so the, the conversation also around food if even if you're not even on the field just contributing towards the the conversation around food because solutions already the solutions already exist mm. and it's a matter of having those solutions being widespread to to many more people and for me, I, if you want to really be within the agri-food system, think about it. Our families at some point were, were self-sustaining and they were able to, to, to help each other, even if you did not have crops, did not have uh, your own animals within your own home, but people were able to help each other back in those days. I, I, I'm, I'm in the agri-food system to, to see more people 
taking the, the 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 taking their dignity back by ensuring that there's food within the within the, within their own plates. Tracy Ledger says uh, the the absence of food in the plate is not just the it's not just the absence of food within the plate, but it is the absence of care. It is the absence of 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 love. It is the absence of dignity of of human dignity. So participate within the food system because at some point we we, we see that. The challenge we have food within the shops but if you do not have money to get to that food you won't get it mm. so do it so that you can inspire the children especially the children there's use the space that you have there's there's never small space mm. for me as, a, as as also as a creator as a as a, as a creative i've been able to use gutter systems with it so at home we have an rtp house but i was able to transform the small space that i have at home and put gutter, use gutters within the space, put some boxes within the space, use old pellets if you must, as an, an opportunity within that. Looking at the broader scale of the agri food system, there's, there's the processing element of it as well, which I haven't been uh, exploring currently at this moment. So if, 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 if you do not even want to, so, so there's so many entries of point within this, like, and you can start with literally nothing by using the, the seeds which you have attained from, from the shop. So mm. there's many beautiful stories out there. Start using podcasts like this. And we, I, 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 because I started agriculture through affiliation with an organization called Google to Urban Food Forest uh, Initiative, I, I, I coach that you can go and look it up and, and see what are the systems that they're using. Uh, to grow the to grow food within the community. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Eleti, for your time today. We thoroughly enjoyed your conversation, and I like the advice that and you're giving well. to young people. You know, uh, the, mm. the 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 different solutions, like you're saying, use old pellets, gutters. You're seeing systems that are being done abroad, mm. uh, but you know, when you look at the price comparison down here, it costs four thousand. Mm. Maybe a young person can't even afford four thousand, but they have that creativity. They have that mindset. They're good with mm. their hands, and how can you create or replicate a system like that yeah. using something that's more accessible uh, down home to grow your own food and I think it's what you're saying just start um, use mm. the resources that you have um, and, and just no excuses right it's, it's, it's really yeah. about starting connecting collaborating and also educating yourself you know we have data uh, every day yeah. or people have access to data or access to Wi-Fi instead of googling other things or watching other videos if you're passionate about the industry there's platforms like the podcast, you know, yeah. to learn and obviously meet individuals like yourself and connect. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, I mean, these are very simple things that you are sharing. And so to anybody watching, just start. So thank you so much for your time, Eletu, and all thank the you, best with Ignite Hub. Thank you for having me on the podcast. And uh, to everyone, please subscribe. This is a very wonderful <laughs> platform and share the content that is being shared here because yeah. we need this in South Africa. Absolutely. And uh, just as the African continent as well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That was Ele Tungana, founder of Ignite Hub, and he's based in the Western Cape. Um, he does a lot of work around urban agriculture, urban farming within the Kuguleti area and various townships. And uh, he was just sharing us uh, his experience and his knowledge about how he's been able to grow food with limited water and land, and how he's also empowering the community, exposing the communities alike to start growing their own food so that they can feed themselves. And I suppose neighboring communities, right? And it all speaks to food security. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like, share with as many people as possible and support the individual, uh, Eletu and his organization, Ignite Hub, if you are in the Western Cape or close to where he's operating, um, please support him. And I think, you know, collaboration is key and that's the way we can grow our organization and empower a lot more people. So thank you so much for watching today's podcast and I will see you next time. Take care. Recording stopped.